Hi, I'm Asla Mullah and I am a registered attorney and in today's video we're going to be talking about sexual harassment in the workplace, more specifically how to report sexual harassment. Unfortunately, sexual harassment is becoming more and more common in our business world and it's something that should definitely not be tolerated. The effect of sexual harassment is that it erodes productivity in the workplace. I mean, a person who is supposed to be going to work to perform their duty is something maybe they're passionate about. And instead of going to work to perform their duties, they're now being afraid of being victimized, being taken advantage of. In effect, it just creates a hostile and a toxic work environment. It decreases productivity and it should be something that should definitely not be tolerated. So typically the person who is being sexually harassed is often done so by somebody who is in a much more senior position. This could be a manager, a supervisor, anyone who has power over the other person and they use this power against them. So the person who is being victimized sexually doesn't know what to do. Who do, who do they report it to? How do they handle the situation? And oftentimes they're not used to a situation like that. So the purpose of today's video is to go through what is sexual harassment, examples of sexual harassment and how to go about reporting it in your workplace. Let's start off by looking at the definition of sexual harassment. What does the law say? In terms of the law, sexual harassment is any kind of uninvited an unwelcome conduct of a sexual nature. Any kind of uninvited and unwelcome conduct of a sexual nature. Examples of sexual harassment are actual physical uh, contact. Obviously, if someone touches you in a way that you never invited them to touch you. The second is sex related jokes that you never asked to be participated in. The third is inappropriate inquiries about your personal life. And this is the most common one. For example, someone will ask you about what you're doing for Valentine's Day or how is your weekend or whether you have a boyfriend in your life or what is your sex relationship with your husband or your wife or your spouse, etc. etc. These are obviously personal questions that the other person has no business really asking you. And the, another pro prominent example is where they send you images that are sexually sexual of nature. For example, porn images or jokes that, are, that should not be really discussed in the workplace. These are examples of sexual harassment. We're not limited to these examples, but this is what we often see in practice. Now, it is important that the employer takes these allegations seriously. That means that they must investigate any allegations of sexual harassment. They cannot dismiss somebody just based on suspicion. That would be an unfair dismissal. They must look into the case properly. If the employer doesn't investigate it after you brought it to their attention, then you may have a case for constructive dismissal. We've done extensive videos explaining what is constructive dismissal and how do you prove it at the CCMA. The links to these videos and the description will now be shown. This you can only use if you brought it to the attention to the employer and they haven't done anything to adequately address it. Let's assume that you've now brought it to the attention to the employer and they've investigated it and they see that there is some merit to the sexual harassment claim. They must now give you two options. Option one is that management will try and resolve the matter informally through counseling. And option two is that management will then institute formal disciplinary action against the perpetrator. Two options, informal counseling or option two, formal disciplinary action. You have the right to choose. You as the victim can decide either you want informal counseling or you want formal disciplinary action. You must therefore make the right choice in terms of what you feel is appropriate for your workplace. Now, it's also important to bear in mind that these kind of matters should be dealt with confidentially in the workplace. In other words, 
no one must be involved unless they have to be involved. There's definitely no discussion in the company. Nobody needs to know about this except the people who are directly involved from management and perhaps a senior member of HR. The nature of this is that it must be done confidentially. If you are unhappy with the way that the company is handling the matter, you can claim constructive dismissal or you can even refer the matter to the CCMA for conciliation and further to the Labour Court for adjudication. Alternatively, you are also welcome to book an appointment with our office where we can help you formulate the grievance process, we can help you to complete the forms correctly or just advise you on the proper way to approach this kind of matters. Like I said, if you want to book an appointment, please click the link below and we shall speak to you soon. I wish you all the best and good luck.